You are listening to the Daily Homily for Magdala in the Holy Land. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood have not, has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are not thinking, you're thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Do we think as human beings do? Or do we think as God does? There's a great consolation in the reading of Jeremiah today. You know, Jeremiah and all the prophets have very strong words. Maybe we could imagine them like somebody in a correctional facility where kids have been on drugs and are in a rehabilitation, or maybe they have been on some crime and they're in a rehabilitation home for their moral life, for their society life, to straighten them out. And so there are strong words that are spoken for misbehavior, and, but there are also words of consolation, because God loves us. And the prophets communicate God's love. Parents would be very derelict in duty if they let their kids, uh, and it, it's adapting from age to age, from year to year, and the life of the child as the child develops, if they didn't point out the mistakes. If they didn't point out the wrong things the child does, because that's part of education. A good coach shows the good things to do and also says, not that way. And when it comes to moral things, it's more grievous because it, if a person makes a mistake playing a game, it's just a game. But life is a serious game. It's more than a game. And so the correction of people in life is very important. And the prophets speak very strong, strong words of correction and condemnation of certain behaviors, but they also speak great words of consolation. And today we have two big promises in the words of Jeremiah, which are typical all through the scriptures. One is, I will make a new covenant in your hearts, and you will get a new heart to be able to respond to the covenant. Because we are weakened, and we need new strength. And this we also have in Ezekiel. He says, I will sprinkle new water on you, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. And the language of the New Testament is very much about the new person in Christ. Not to continue in the old pattern of life, but not just an outside behavior pattern, but it's a a new attitude model inside, a new attitude behavior, because we are remade, renewed in Christ. So in that sense, the Christian reading of these scriptures was how we are made new in Christ, and the whole New Testament is about this new heart and new life. And that's how also baptism is seen as a rebirth, the birth of the new person, that we are completely remade through the grace of baptism. 
And then for us Catholics, we have very practical uh, spiritual application. It's very practical. We go to the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Our heart sometimes gets spattered with the world, gets contaminated with the world. We adopt worldly ways, worldly attitudes, worldly expectations, worldly reactions, and we don't think like God thinks. We think like the world thinks. And then we go to confession and we ask forgiveness. And that's a renewal of baptismal grace. This is a, a good uh, conclusion for us. Maybe now, even after all the period of the lockdowns with COVID, and the practice of the sacraments has been lost to a great extent in many places. And this reading could be a big call for us that we can have a new heart. We don't have to be resigned pessimistically to the misery of our brokenness. We know we are broken in the sense that we will not be angels, but we can have all this load lifted from us. And the sacrament of reconciliation is a beautiful way for this to be granted to us. It is the normal way for us to be reconciled with Christ. And we receive the forgiveness. And why? Because God wants us to have a new heart. We don't have to be going around with a heart <clears throat> with a whole lot of scar tissue with a lot of guilt, with a lot of burden, regret, we can have a new heart and, and approach life anew and therefore be able to live much better. And so we have the Psalm 51, the Psalm of David. In fact, we pray this Psalm every night in our community. I imagine many, many religious communities do this Psalm 51 as we go to sleep to pray this Psalm. Create a clean heart in me, O God, a steadfast spirit renew within me. And so this psalm is also a great prayer, an act of contrition, is actually an expression of the new heart. How often do we say an act of contrition? It's certainly part of the practice of the sacrament of reconciliation. It includes an expression of our heartfelt sorrow for our sins. But we can also say an act of contrition at other times, even before we go to the sacrament of reconciliation. If we are aware of some time of some sin where that old patterns of our heart came out and we did wrong and when we come to our senses the one of the first most beautiful things to do is to stop and say Lord I'm sorry Lord forgive me I repent I want to show you my love help me an act of contrition is one of the most beautiful renewing ways to have this new heart and then we are in Caesarea Philippi with um, Philippi with Jesus and the disciples and we have this uh, wonderful encounter and conversation uh, between Jesus and the twelve and the opinion poll who do they say that you are and this promise that's given to Peter who is the spokesperson of the faith which is a gift from God it's not his brains his brains receive and understand and profess but he received a gift. He didn't make it up. It's something that the Heavenly Father gave him. And he professes the faith in the Christ. You are the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. And he adds on, you are the Son of the Living God. It's a very strong statement in this context. And Jesus recognizes that Simon has this, that he's blessed to have this grace. And, and then he declares him to be the rock, in front of a huge rock, in Caesarea Philippi. And on this rock, I will build my church. Yesterday, I heard this commentary from this Australian commentator, um, Daily Gospel Exegesis, also called Logical Bible Commentary on the Spotify app. It's on different apps, apparently. And he was commenting how many Protestant scholars today, when they do the exegesis of this passage, admit that the Catholic reading of this, about this authority that's given to Peter, is actually the best reading of this text. And I was impressed to hear that piece of data. And uh, it's um, a great consolation. And therefore, we should pray also for, for our Holy Father and for everybody who is teaching authority, the bishops especially, because here we can see that when God gives a responsibility in the church, it doesn't mean that it's automatically easy. 
There's a transformation of the heart of the ministers who have been given this authority that's needed. Peter needs to learn the way of the cross. And so does every single parent and teacher of the faith uh, needs to learn the way of the cross because we're not just saying a formula. We're following Jesus all the way. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.